We're going to take a look at some of the text input changes in Gingerbread. You can see right here, this is a uh, text message thread. Uh, it looks pretty normal. First, um, let's go and tap here and bring up the keyboard. You can see the keyboard looks quite a bit different. There, visually, there's more spacing between the keys, especially between the rows. Uh, also, different use of colors, and you can long press buttons to bring up uh, numbers here without having to go into the dedicated number area. Prediction seems a little bit better. Uh, things seem a little bit more accurate, and uh, quite honestly, um, it seems when you're a little more wild with your finger flying around that it does a better job of predicting um, mistakes and figuring out what you want intended. So this is a quick reply. Going to uh, intentionally misspell reply here, so you can see that it's um, bolded the text reply there, even though I typed R W P L Y, and I can double tap to get the space. Now, one of the new features here is that you can simply tap on a word to get back to the editing of it. And you can see if I had really meant to type in R W P L Y, I could just tap that there. Same thing uh, with quick. You can see other words, so it was trying to predict and you know save some effort here. You know with um, you know, contractions and things like that. It's really kind of cool. Additionally, you'll notice the new uh, cursor control. Definitely easier to use than the old system of just trying to tap everywhere. Uh, take a closer look at the keyboard itself. One of the things you'll notice here is support for multiple languages. Um, just to give you a quick obvious difference here. Notice the positioning of the Z and Y. Uh, the Germans use a QWERTY Z layout keyboard as opposed to the QWERTY layout we use. So I can quickly switch between German and English dictionaries just by long pressing and then swiping on the spacebar. So now the Y is back up there and the Z is back there, which is pretty cool. You'll find the microphone for speech inputs there still, but things look a little bit different. This is a test message. just like we expected. Works pretty well. You'll notice it says you can put punctuation in there too, so let's try that. This is another test message, period. The landscape keyboard has gotten a similar treatment visually. Everything works the same way. Now if you want to put in something like a comma or a, another special character, you don't have to switch all the way into the uh, symbols view here. You can just long press right here on the full stop period, whatever you want to call it, and select the more common ones. Um, comma being most common, of course, it's just easy. So you just long press the, the period and let go and then you've got a comma. And of course that works equally well in the portrait mode. So now that we've seen uh, the virtual keyboard and everything, let's take a look at some of the copy and paste functionality. Uh, first of all, in the messaging app here, all you can do is copy the entire text of the message. Uh, you can't just select and copy particular parts. So um, to show you how it works in different parts of the system, I'm going to paste this in here just so you can see it. So now we've got the in here in the editor, I'm going to long press on one of the words and I'm going to say select word and then I can grab the handlebars and move them around to wherever I wish and tap on the text and then I can copy it. And You can see if I do a select all, erase it and then paste, we'll have just that one part I selected. Now if we're in a different part of the system such as a email reader or say the web browser, you just long press on a word and it'll select and bring up the handlebars and then you can drag them out to you know, wherever you want, up or down, left and right, and tap to copy. So which is completely different than when you're inside the editor, which is again completely different from when you're trying to get text from a uh, text message. In all cases though, when you want to paste the text, you long press on the text input box and then hit paste. There's a much needed new feature that's been added to the Google search system here. Now we start typing in something. I'm going to type in, um, you know, I don't know, cell phone. And you'll see some of the, the entries down here have little pencil marks here. 
So what you can do is instead of just tapping here and immediately being sent to cell phone reviews, I can tap here and then add something to it, say Motorola. And again, I can tap here and add more words. Makes the search results much more useful. And then, of course, I only have to hit the uh, Go button here to actually do the search. We're in the About section of the Nexus S uh, Gingerbread system here. You can see it says Android version 2.3. But What I really want to show you is the new battery monitor functionality. Notice the graph up here at the top. It's showing the downward slope of uh, the battery status in terms of percentages. You still have the same information you had before, showing that you know the display has consumed 46% of the power that I've used so far, um, as opposed to you know the cell system and things like that. But it's kind of cool when you tap on the graph, you get a larger graph, so you can see you know the ups and downs and plateaus. As you know, obviously in this flatter section, it was probably sitting there doing nothing. Um, steeper sections, like recently down here at the bottom, you can see it's because I've been using it for doing the video. And if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see when the Wi-Fi system's been on, when the device has been awake. So you can see that the um, Wi-Fi almost perfectly matches up with when the phone's been awake. So I've had Wi-Fi on most of the time. Um, you can see screen on and things like that. It's pretty cool what it shows you. It's definitely more useful than the system in the prior versions. I'm going to long press on the home button here and bring up the recent apps and show you the new downloads app, which is uh, now found in the main menu. And it gives you quick access to everything you've downloaded through the web browser and such. Um, so you can see I've downloaded a couple of images here in an application. Just mark a couple and then uh, I can delete them, get rid of those images I was just using for demo purposes, but I am going to install that uh, beta of touchdown. So that's some of what you can expect to see when you get your hands on Gingerbread Android version 2.3. I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.